Well, hello there. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Best of Both Worlds. Today I am working on an antique hand-pieced quilt and I know that the person that made this quilt was born in 1888. That is so exciting. When I'm working on those quilts I think of um, how endearing it was to her to make these quilts. And when I started long arm quilting over 23 years ago, I heard so often that you should not quilt, machine quilt, a hand-pieced antique quilt. But then with the number of quilts that were coming into me, I realized that I was the Obi-Wan Kenobi, the only hope of that quilt probably ever getting quilted. So I'm thrilled to be able to put my art on their art and get these quilts out there so people can enjoy them. What this one is, is kind of an expanded Dresden plate. And um, of course it's not perfect, the circles are not perfect, but it is turning out awesome. So let's get started and I'll show you what I'm doing on it. Well, you can see how wonderful these fabrics are and there is definitely a center here and that is the center that I'm going to have to use. But what I want to do is um, to stabilize this quilt, I just did um, two circles around the outside and did place the uh, design in the middle and then came around into the white area and placed that. So I do want to measure that and so I can just, from where I am, I will just toggle over to the measuring tape and select and then I will just come across here and see how big that circle is and they could all be different actually. That says 7, 7.9. So I can get out of that and I do want to make sure that I come in a quarter of an inch inside. I don't want to even come close because I know this isn't a perfect circle, but my machine will do a perfect circle. So I'm going to go over and make that just a half an inch smaller so that it will um, come in a quarter of an inch on each side. So I will go to the screen to do that. So I'm going to come over here and I will right click on the width and I will put that in. And then I can change that, which 5 from 7 is 2. So if I just put 2 in there, and I click out here, now it's got this because it was a circle and the freeze aspect is on, um, I've got that measurement in there. So now I want to go to repeat pattern, and it is already showing me the pattern location will be in the center. So if I go to the machine and I click right in the center of this blue area, even though I know it's not a circle, it puts my pattern right up there and there it is. Now I will just double check that by moving this over. I can see my cross hairs and make sure that that is outside. And of course I will watch this as it sews and um, I can push gently on the quilt if I need to. So I can just go over now and quilt this pattern in. And the inside circle. This is one I really want to watch to make sure it's not going to get into that blue area at all. Did great.
Wonderful. That completed my circles. Now let me show you what I did on the other part and then we'll do a little freehand. This next pattern is a really cute pattern and um, it was designed so that it stays away from the edge here but I do need to make sure that it really comes to a point there. I'm going to use repeat pattern but first I need to build a boundary. So I will push my boundary and start right here. I love hearing that noise. Just going to the point there and then I have a little seam here is what I am using. There we go. And then I'm just going to eyeball down here. It doesn't matter how far down I come because I know it's going to go off the quilt. So it's not a problem. And it looks really cool. There we go. So now we have a boundary and we will push stop there and we will go over to repeat pattern. And um, you can see that it's the center here. So all I have to do is click on the center. So repeat pattern and I will put the second one in and the third. There we go. Now I will have to adjust each one of those and I'll use my machine to see where I am on the screen and then I can come over to the screen and highlight it. I'll make it bigger here. Move this down a little bit so you can see. I need that to be right there where those crosshairs are because that's exactly where it's going to meet up. And then I will just double check down here to see if that's going to meet up with that one. That is really close. And then of course this one will be on that line right there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and sew that one. We'll sew them individually. so that we can adjust them each as we go. So I will just continue to adjust these um, to be exactly where I need them to be. And that one is right on. And this is hard because this side's going to have to go up a little bit. Like that. And I will just um, go ahead and sew that out. before I adjust the next one.
And let's see, we want to stop that because I need to make sure that this is lined up. I'll just check that point up there one more time. There we go. A nice simple pattern, but so cute. Now I have some blank spots here in the border, which I don't want to leave um, because the border was a little bit, had a little extra fullness in it anyway. So I want to show you how quickly I can just fill that in with freehand, and I will be in constant to do that. So I'm just going to do nice little curves over here like this. Do that line and back that line and back and I'll come over here and these will go this way so basically what I'm doing is I will be cuddling a pinwheel in here and I just move the machine at nice even spa speed you could certainly use your regulated stitch and just come around you'll be amazed at how round you can make that up to that line and then back. So I just kind of cuddle that pinwheel and then back and forth like this. And one more in there. And just go all the way across the bottom. Can you see how quickly I can put these in? It's amazing and it's fun. If you haven't tried using the constant and the power assist, it's pretty amazing, really, because um, I do a lot of freehand, and I'll do freehand with the belts off on the Statler, and I absolutely love it. But I find that the power assist is, has just been totally amazing to me, and not having to uh, take those belts off, which takes, what, just a few seconds, really. There we go. Now this quilt is um, completely quilted, finally, after a long, long time. So let's take a look at it before it was quilted and after. Wow, what a dramatic difference between unquilted and quilted. That quilt top has been in a box for many years, passed down through the family. We are grateful to have these wonderful tools to use. Thank you so much for joining me today.
For products, patterns, and retreats, visit lindavtaylor.com.